I'm with Maggie Lee, an environmental solution strategist. We're in the grand ballroom of the Pullman Bangkok Grand Circumvit, and you are watching Bangkok Venue Talk. Maggie, are we demonizing plastic? I think um, last year, if that question was asked, I would say that we're starting to attain um, good attention um, to the problem of plastics, but now I think it's rapidly vilified at a point that um, I'm getting a little bit worried. Our life is surrounded by plastics, like mobile phones, TVs, light switches. Um, do, you, do you think that we should be focused on this single-use plastic and more awareness of what type of plastic we're trying to remove out of the system uh, compared to plastics that are essential for our life? Because I don't think people are educated. A lot of people are saying, uh, cut out plastic, but that's not the solution, is it? Indeed, it's, um, it's always the case when people try to generalize something and then they come up with something that's very simple. So plastics originally was that simple solution for that. Uh, someone made this great polymer, this material that's lightweight, that's cheap, that's um, pretty much invincible. It can do anything in the world. But then uh, we just thought that we could throw it away. That's the solution. If we always think like that, we're just going to create the next demon. And so that's also why um, it's not going to be that simple. And of course, plastic is, has already made its way into every bit of our lives. Like you mentioned, everything contains plastic. And so my clothes contain plastic, jewelry contains plastic, and all our electronics, your watch, my phone, everything. And so if we're just saying to weed out plastics for the sake of weeding it out, that doesn't make sense to me at all. And so um, for the organizations that I have and will work for, um, we do believe that we should look at it from a very broken down point of view, meaning that we should look at the specific types of plastics that do have a higher chance of ending up in the oceans or in nature in general. And so as you mentioned, single-use plastics, we're just pumping them out at such like tremendous and scary rates. And so that's also why we should work on them first. We tend to have an over-dependence on single-use plastics. They are just very convenient for our everyday use. And that they're- A single-use plastic would be a plastic bag at a supermarket, uh, a bottle of water in plastic that we consume very quickly and then throw away. That, that's my understanding of single-use plastic. Exactly. I yep. was just about to go into that. But okay. Sometimes we're not so comfortable with talking about other industries that we do not know so much about. For example, the medical industry. They do use a lot of single-use plastics too. Right. So the syringes that uh, the vaccines come in, of course, mm -hmm. they're single-use as well. If we make everything out of glass, it will be very hard to transport. And the carbon footprint will be high because it's much heavier than plastic. And so that's also why why we need to look at even single-use plastic every case by case. We shouldn't look at single-use plastic as something that's really, really bad. Sometimes it is required. For example, with the cucumber. I love using the cucumber as an example because everyone has eaten a cucumber before and certainly have seen one in supermarkets. What do they look like? They usually are heat shrink wrapped in that form, right? With the, just like a cucumber. And mm. Every cucumber has a different shape. And so that shrink wrap is actually not recyclable. And it is single use for sure, right? You just cut it open and you throw it away. But that cucumber shrink wrap actually keeps the cucumber lasting for much longer than it should have been without the wrap. And so it will shrivel into something that you don't want to eat in the fridge. But with the wrap, it lasts for 14 more days. And so with food waste considered and everything else, especially with carbon footprint, land use, water use, and displacement of food crops, we really think that plastics should remain in our everyday life, but not in the same scale as what it is right now. There's a big issue and talk about the plastic in the oceans. And somebody recently told me there's an estimated 5 billion pieces of plastic floating around the seas worldwide. Um, is there a solution for this? Do you think we can extract the plastic from the seas? There are many innovations and also um, a lot of effort going into retrieving the plastics in the ocean, which I feel are definitely noble uh, attempts and effort for that. But what I believe in more so is that just like when you walk into a bathroom, maybe in this brilliant hotel, when you walk into a bathroom, you see the bathtub running and it's overfilling. Do you grab the mop first or do you turn off the tap first? Right. So everyone would say, yes, of course, I turn off the tap first because no matter how much I mop, the plastic will still come out, right? So that's exact same thing. The water will still come out, right? So that's exact same thing with plastics. 
we keep using so much of it that the rate is already humongous. And so whatever is out there, of course, we have to clean up. We call that legacy plastic or recovery of legacy plastic. But what, what we do now is that we have to play on the current timeline. So use less of that plastic so that we have less to deal with later. Can we live this lifestyle with less plastic, though? Because, you know, I'm a hypocrite. The amount of plastic water bottles I get through in a week is outrageous. Yet I do attend all these environmental um, events and I feel very guilty. I feel like a criminal. Um, how can we live a sustained quality life without single use plastic? Or is the solution in effective capture and recycling? Also, does education play a part? I'm just lost in this whole um, issue of pollution and plastics. Yeah, I'm smiling because um, that's what everyone has been looking at right now for solutions for themselves. So as a person, as a person who's concerned and conscious, how can I live my life better so mm. that I have less of a negative impact on the environment in general, not even just for plastics? Um, we do advocate for everyone to actually start thinking about the single-use plastic that they use and replacing it with solutions like bringing your own, for example. So I have two bags in my bag right now. So in my handbag, I have two bags, one for buying food and one for buying um, any grocery. So if I buy um, uh, some milk or some eggs, I just put the, the groceries into my bag. So a lot of people are already able to do that. But we find that there are always hurdles with each solution. For example, if you're a gentleman and you just wear your trousers, usually you don't have room f to bring many, many bags or straws or, or utensils with you. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that is a problem. We're tackling the problem through giving solutions to businesses, much like this entity that we're in right now, this establishment we're in right now. Mm -hmm. So we are providing um, commercial entities like hotels, supermarkets, restaurants, and even e-commerce um, businesses, some solutions for them to look into so that they can target a realistic reduction of unused or, um, or over-used um, single-use plastics so that they can look at what to do next instead of just shooting in the dark, which is a very bad idea. Imagine if you have a bunch of people, everyone's shooting in the dark. So where are we shooting, right? And who's going to be damaged, right? It's mm. us, right? And so that's also why we're coming up with solutions that work on making a circular economy instead. Instead of saying no plastics, why not use all the plastics that's out there already? Because 40% of all the plastics that's ever produced is still out there. So they're either floating in the oceans or maybe sunk in the oceans, or they're out there in the landfills, hard to retrieve. And so what we're saying is that we take back what we can, keep using that, forever so that it's still in function. So some of the plastics that are able to be um, in a circular motion like that in the circular economy would be PET. Mm. So PET is pretty much your um, beverage bottle. And so that plastic is actually very good. We can reuse that, recycle that a lot, a lot of times before it is completely depleted. And so that's also why um, sometimes when we need single use plastic, we should use a type of plastic that's better for the environment, meaning that they have a second life and that it does not replace uh, crops. We've heard of um, the avocado seed um, plastic, the durian husk plastic. I just read on, on the way here, um, some um, banana leaf plates. So the, these are all great. And so they are definitely biodegradable because they do rot in the nature, right? So that's why um, it, it goes away by itself. It's not like plastic. Unfortunately, there's another problem posed by these things. If you make plastic out of corn, let's say, so what has, already been the, the niche of the corn is being now replaced with something else. So we're now using corn as a disposable instead of a food, which is a nutrition that can actually be provided to people like us or even livestock. So what does that mean? So you know that there's a fire going on in the Amazon, right? Mm. Everyone's thinking like, why, why, why is this person talking about the fire in the Amazon when she's here to talk about plastics? It is actually very much related because um, the Amazon is being cleared to grow more corn. Where does corn come from? So that actually makes you really think, if we're already taking so much corn in our, in our diet and livestock is already eating so much grains like corn, we're still using plastics made out of corn. Isn't that gonna demand more corn and demand more land for that uh, corn crop? And so that's also why we're saying that um, as many environmental organizations have already rallied for to stop using so much plastic but not saying that we should move out completely from plastics and think about sustainable alternatives, not just alternatives, but sustainable alternatives, like maybe using waste material to make plastics, to make this alternatives for plastics. What, what do you see as the challenges and changes ahead in the next five years? 
we are trying to create a narrative for these companies that are trying to be the champion. First of all, they need to be rewarded for being the first of their industries to, to act on this. Secondly, they need someone to guide them. So no hotel has a um, material specialist in, in, in their hotel to procure these materials. And so um, we're hoping that these environmental organizations can serve that purpose so that there's like a communal help desk. What should we do with the toothpaste and the toothbrush, if not plastic? Is bamboo a good choice? Is cornware a good choice? It depends on where, right? So in the Sahara, would you choose a steel fork or a disposable plastic fork? If you're in the Sahara, you're not having enough water to wash, wash the steel fork. So would it be better if the plastic fork is properly disposed of compared with washing another steel fork? So it's a lot of food for thought. It's a really case by case scenario. And so that's why it requires a lot of manpower in this area so that we can look at it case by case and find solutions for each one of them. A lot of uh, topics and elements to be thought through. And I think more actions needed really, isn't it, by everyone. Maggie Lee, environmental solution strategist. Thank you for meeting with us today. Thank you. And thank you for watching Bangkok Venue Talk.